case the public key will be known to everyone and private key will be known to the specific person okay if the person going to send the message to the receiver using the receiver's public key they can encrypt the messages and send to the receiver receiver can able to decrypt the message using the, its own private okay if using its own private key they can able to decrypt the messages okay it's of the public key cryptography okay so these are rsa deferment okay so a lot of things we saw in the last classes okay so in this elliptic cryptography so why we are moving to the elliptic cryptography instead of rsa and tpl okay so why means okay the majority of public key crypto system like rsa defl man use either integer or polynomial arithmetic with very large numbers or polynomials okay majority of public key crypto system like rsa and defl man use either integer or polynomial arithmetic with very large numbers or polynomials okay so it imposes a significant load okay it imposes a significant load in storing and processing keys and messages okay it imposes significant load in storing and processing keys and messages okay so that so that we are going to the alternative one so using the elliptic cryptography okay so what is the advantage of using the elliptic cryptography it means it is a faster one compared to rsa and defl man okay the elliptic curve cryptography will be faster to perform encryption decryption okay so when you are performing encryption decryption okay the elliptic curve cryptography will be faster okay. and next one it will use the small keys okay so if, for example when you are going to rsa we are using the uh, 2048 or 324 bit keys okay uh, 1024 to 2048 more than that we are using okay so when you are ha having the higher uh, bit of keys you have the higher security but when you are doing the elliptic cryptography even if you are using the low level uh, low size of keys small size of keys okay it will give the uh, higher level security okay by using the small bit bit size of keys it will give the higher security okay so that's what we are using the, that's what we are saying the faster encryption decryption but when you are using the uh, large number of keys when you are using large number of keys the processing will be very difficult okay so it will the encryption decryption process will be will be very complex so it will take more time to complete the encryption decryption okay it will take more computations okay like it will take more computations so it will slow down the your system okay it will slow down your system okay so that's what we are saying the yeah, third one is a low computational power so if you are using the elliptic cryptography it will take low computational power so due to the uh, it, uh, it will have a reduced less number of complexity okay so it can be used in the even in the handle device and a lot of smart devices also okay we always prefer the uh, low computation algorithm okay so we always prefer the low computation algorithm because uh, if you have uh, high computation and if you if you're, if you're uh, having high number of keys Okay, it will take more time to perform the computations. Okay, it will slow down the system. So instead of that, when you are having the uh, this small number of keys with the, uh, fast encryption decryption with less time, okay, it will increase your speed, system speed. Okay, so we always prefer the low computation and uh, power uh, power algorithm. Okay, so that's why we are choosing the elliptic cryptography. Okay, the elliptic cryptography it will provide the high security with the smaller bit size of keys okay high security with the smaller bit size of keys so next one so when you have going to the elliptic curve okay so we are going to we can define the elliptic curve in the three different ways okay we can define the elliptic curve in three different ways one is the elliptic curve over real numbers okay first one is the elliptic curve over real numbers and second one is the elliptic, elliptic curve over prime numbers and third one is the elliptic curve over finite fields okay using this three way we can able to define the elliptic curves okay so we will see one by one okay first one elliptic curve over real numbers okay when you are going to the elliptic curve over real numbers as we know okay so uh, as we are saying elliptic okay actually it's not a elliptic eclipse okay and um, the yeah, ellipse it is uh, used in the cubic equations okay it is not a ellipse okay it uses a cubic equation so what is the cubic equation means this is a cubic equation for the real numbers, elliptic curve over real numbers. Y square equal to x cube plus ax plus b. Okay, so this is a cubic equation for elliptic curve over real numbers. Okay, elliptic curve over real numbers. Okay, so in this where x, y, a, b all are real numbers. Okay, 
for x and y and all are uh, real numbers okay if you want if we are going to plot the curve okay if you are going to plot the curve for this equation y square equal to x cube plus x plus b okay so we have to compute y equal to okay we have to compute y equal to root of x cube plus a plus a x plus b okay so you have to compute the y you have to compute the y equal to root of x cube plus a x plus b for curve a and b okay for the points for the curve a and b okay so the this is a cubic equation for the real numbers okay if you are going to plot the curve for uh, this equation y square equal to x cube plus a x b okay so you have to compute the y equal to root of x square plus a x plus b for curve a comma b okay so in this if you have the value you have you know x x coordinates okay and a b coordinates everything you know uh, a b and parameter value everything you know okay this y value can give the two different value so one is a positive it can give the positive value and it can give the negative value so it, the y can yield the two different values positive values and negative values okay so you have the x coordinates and a and b parameters okay we a and b coordinates okay just a minute So, as I said, so if you're going to plot curve for this equation, you have to compute y value. Okay, that's the root of x cube plus a x plus b for a comma b. Okay, so it the, this y can uh, yield the two values, positive value and negative value. Okay, this y can give the two values, positive value and negative value. Okay, so if okay, as I said before, okay, so in this the symmetric value we are saying is a y equal to zero. So what is the symmetric means? Okay, as you know. So this is the x-axis, okay, x, x, y axis. If this if we are saying it is symmetric, if the, the both this curve will on both sides should be equal. Okay. If on both sides should be equal, we can say that it's a symmetric curve. Okay, we can say symmetric curve and y equal to zero. Okay. Symmetric curve, we can say y equal to zero. Okay. So we are we are saying so this is a symmetric curve. Okay. So when you are uh, plotting curve in this, we can we are getting the symmetric curve. Okay, so that we are getting y equal to zero here. Okay, so when you are performing the addition, okay, so this is what the cubic equation. Okay, so when you are performing the addition, okay, so we have some rules for addition in the, using the uh, real numbers. What are the rules for addition means? So when you are plotting the curve using this equation, y square equal to x cube, x cube, x cube plus x plus b, okay, the three point, okay, so it can, when you are drawing a straight line, okay, so it will meet at the three point, at least it will join, get the three points, p, q and r okay okay minimum it will get the three points p q and r okay if if it get the three point joined by a straight line okay if it get the three point joined by a straight line okay then we can say it's a symmetric and the sum of the three point p q r the sum of the p q r is zero okay uh, sum of p q r is a zero okay so the two, when you are plotting the curve for the cubic equation y square equal to a x cube plus a x plus b, okay. And when you are drawing a straight line, a straight line on this curve, okay, a straight line on this curve. If it meet three point join uh, join by the straight line, okay, then the sum of this all three point p q r sum of this all three point is we are seeing as a zero. Okay, some of these all three points we are seeing is a zero. Okay, so it will go to the infinitive manner so that we have to fix the value, the maximum value. The maximum value is we are seeing is a n. Okay, the n should also be a prime number. N should, uh, must be a prime number. Okay, so when you are drawing the straight line, it will go to the infinitive loop. Okay, in, 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 in infinite time. So we have to limit this. So for example, I limit it up to this. So the, this n value is this is the n value. The, this is the maximum value. The maximum value is we are seeing is a n. n must be a prime. Okay, 
This n value must be a prime. Okay. Okay, this n value must be a prime. Okay. So as I said, this is a symmetric axis. Then the, when you have this symmetric axis, symmetric axis means this both side it must be equal. Okay, both side must be equal. Okay, that's what we are saying. It's a symmetric axis. Okay. So this is what the uh, rules for additions. Okay. So when you have the uh, three point joined by a straight line, we can the sum of three point is zero. Okay. We can say the sum of three point is zero. Okay. So that here the zero will be adding as an identity here. So zero will be adding as an identity. So the point of P plus zero. Okay. The point of P plus zero will all equal to P. Okay. The uh, point of P. The P means the it get the it has the coordinates of x x comma y. Okay. It has the coordinate of x comma y. Okay. The point of P plus zero will always equal to P. Okay. So then we can say the P has the coordinate x x comma y or x p comma y k y p for the same x coordinates. When you are converting this uh, in the negative, when you are converting into negative point, uh, negative p, okay, that's a negative p. So you, you will give, give the result as x p comma minus y p. Okay, you have to change this x p comma minus y p for the same coordinates for the negative p. Okay, the coordinate is x p minus y p. Okay, so this is a point p. The point p coordinates x p y p for the same. When you are converting the same coordinate x coordinate for the negative p. So this will be the xp minus yp. Okay, this is the rules for addition in the electric curve over real numbers. Okay, so electric curve over real numbers. Okay, and the, what you are doing means so in the electric curve over real numbers. Okay, so it's not a, a ellipse. Okay, so it is used a cubic equations. It's a cubic equation. So this is a cubic equation for the so electric curve over real numbers. Okay, so to when you are plotting the curve for this uh, equations, okay, we have to compute y value. Okay, so y equal to root of x cube plus a x plus b. So this y will give the two values, positive value and negative value. Okay, this y will give the two values, positive value and negative value. Okay, so using that, okay, so if we can give the zero zero point means the so both the points. Okay, we can say it's a different zero point. So when the three point joined by a straight line, okay, we can say it's a zero point. Okay, and the sum of the three points we are saying as a zero. Okay, the sum of three points we are saying as a zero. Okay, yes, zero will be adding as an identity. So the point P plus zero will always yield the result as P. Okay, so P means they have the S and Y coordinates. When you are converting converting into negative P for the same X coordinate, we are getting as a X P minus Y. Okay, this is for rules for addition of uh, elliptic curve for the real numbers. Okay, next we will see the elliptic curve over prime numbers. Okay, that means this Z P. Okay. ZP means you can say it's a prime real number, a uh, prime numbers. Okay, elliptic over, over prime numbers. Okay, so when you are going to elliptic over prime numbers, as we said before, okay, the cubic equation, okay, the cubic equation contains set of variables and coefficients. Okay, the cube, the cubic equation contains set of variables and coefficients. Okay, so this all the variables and coefficients is between the zero to p minus one. Okay, so all the uh, okay, so all the uh, variables and coefficients must be between the zero and p minus one. Okay, so that's what we are saying. It's a prime number p. So p means uh, it should be between the zero to p minus one. Okay, so in this, the electric curve over prime number means like it contains a set of variables and coefficients. Okay, so all the values of the variables and coefficients is between the zero and p minus one. Okay, between zero and p minus one. So this is the cubic equation for the elliptic curve over prime numbers. Okay, so we can also say prime curve. So elliptic curve over prime numbers, or we can also say as a prime curve. Another term is a prime curve. Okay, so the cubic equation for this prime curve is the y square mod p equal to x cube plus a x plus b mod p. Okay, so this is a cubic equation for the uh, prime curve or prime numbers, elliptic curve over prime numbers. Okay. So you to use the integer modulo a prime for both variables and coefficients and best in softwares. Okay. So in this also we have the rules for additions. Okay. So what is the rules for addition here means? Okay. The point of P plus zero will always is the result as P. Okay. The point of P, okay, plus zero. Okay. When the 
uh, when you, if you when you're drawing the straight line on the curve okay if it meet the three uh, point in the curve in the in the straight line okay so then some of the all the three points we are seeing as a zero okay then the p plus zero will be zero uh, it will be p okay, p plus zero will be p okay so the p means it have the x and y coordinates okay for the same x coordinates uh, when you are converting to the negative p you are getting the xp minus yp okay you are getting xp minus yp that means p plus minus p so we always yield the result as zero okay p plus minus p will always yield the result as zero this is for the elliptic curve over prime numbers or prime curve okay so elliptic curve over prime uh, curve means okay it contains a set of variables and coefficients so all the values of the variables and coefficients is between the zero to p minus one okay between zero to p minus one okay so this is equation cubic equation for the prime curve okay so rules for addition of the prime curve is okay the p plus zero always give the result as p okay this is the xp x and y coordinates for the p when you are converting the same x coordinate for the negative p so xp minus yp you can write it in the form of xp minus one yp that means the p plus minus p always yield the result as zero this is the second one okay elliptic curve over uh, prime curve or prime numbers and third one okay elliptic curve over finite field okay elliptic curve over finite field okay so this is what we are saying is a finite field finite field that means up to 2 power m okay that means here the cubic equation contains set of elements up to 2 power m okay the cubic equation contain this contain the set of elements up to 2 power m okay so this is the third one so elliptic curve over finite field so gf mean galaxy field or finite field we are seeing okay that means 2 power m okay so it contain the cubic equation contain the set of elements up to 2 power m okay the cubic equation for this uh, finite field is y square plus xy equal to x cube plus a x square plus b okay y, uh, y square plus xy plus xy equal to x cube plus a x square plus b okay so here also we have the rules for additions okay so when you have the rules for addition okay when you have the point of p plus zero will give the result as p okay so the the point of p has the coordinate x comma y okay when you are converting the uh, converting the negative p okay so you have the xp comma xp plus yp okay when you are converting to the negative p you have the coordinate as xp comma xp plus yp the previous two okay using the uh, like a prime curve or using the uh, real numbers we have x uh, if there is a positive p we have the coordinate xp yp if it is a neg when you are converting negative p we have xp comma minus yp but here we when you are converting the p into uh, point p into negative point p okay here the co coordinate is xp comma xp plus yp okay here it will be very okay xp plus yp xp comma xp plus yp okay so this is the rules for additions for the uh, finite field okay so this is a three part okay so the elliptic can be defined in the uh, three ways so using the real, real numbers using the prime curve or prime numbers using the finite field okay in this three way we can define the elliptic curve okay so next we'll see in the next one so using the uh, okay uh, using this one so we actually we have the one trapdoor functions okay so what the trapdoor function means okay for example if we are for the given x we can be able to compute y easily okay for given x you can compute the y easily but for given y okay it's not easily you can be able to compute the y okay it's not easy now you can not able to compute the x very easily it will be very hard to compute the x for given y it will be very hard to compute the x okay for given x it, we can easily compute the x so inverse will be very hard to compute the value of inverse is very hard okay that's what we are saying here okay for the given for, so for example okay uh, q equal to kp okay the q equal to kp here the k is here uh, random integers okay the k the k is a random integer less than n okay k is a random integer less than n okay for given k and p we can easily compute q value for given k and p we can easily compute the k value but for if you are giving the q 
uh, and p okay for given q and p it will be very difficult to compute the k value the p means p inverse okay we are in the form of only we can able to compute the k value k value okay so for the given k and p value we can easily compute the q value okay it will be very easy okay so this one will be very easy but to compute this one will be very hard okay so that's what we are saying the trapdoor function but so we can compute easily when they are giving the uh, if they are giving a trapdoor value of t okay so we can compute this one very easily when they are giving the trapdoor value t okay if they get if they are giving the trapdoor value t we can compute this one very easily okay so that's what we are saying a trapdoor functions okay so trapdoor function means for given x it will be very difficult to compute uh, it will be very easy to compute the y value but for given y value it will be very difficult to compute the x value okay but for give if they giving the trapdoor value t so it will be very easy to compute the inverse inverse uh, inverse value okay so that's what they given here okay so if the for given k and p very difficult to compute the q value here okay but for the given q and p value okay here given k and p will be given so it will be if it is coming k for given q and p it will be difficult to find the k value okay so known as a elliptical logarithm problem this one is known as a elliptical logarithm problem okay next we see the uh, encryption decryption using the elliptical cryptography okay so here we are using the defi element key exchange method okay as we discussed before in last two classes okay here also we are using the what's the time okay okay so here also we are using the defi element key exchange method okay in the electric cryptography we are using the defi element key exchange method okay so for, for what you are doing here means okay so you have to first you have to choose the large integer q okay you have to choose the large large integer q and you have to uh, that means q is a prime number and you have to choose the g okay so g means okay it's a point on curve uh, curve large value n okay the point on curve on large value n okay so point on curve for the large value n so that means it have a coordinate x x1 and y1 or we, we can have as the integer value okay so yeah this is the global public variables okay so you have to choose the q value okay or q or p they can give us a p or q okay so you have to choose the uh, 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 q value or p value here okay q or p next you have to choose the g value okay you have to choose the g value okay g is the okay uh, point on curve for a large value here. okay point on curve for large value here. okay so you have to do global public variable okay so this will be known to the sender as well as the receiver okay so after that sender and receiver need to choose the private key okay sender and receiver need to choose the private key so private key means here na so the here is uh, a, user a is private key user b is private key and should be lesser than n okay and this value should be lesser than n so user a and user b both are choosing the private key okay then using this private key the user a and b calculating the public key their public keys okay so the user a calculating the public key using the user a's private key into g okay this is the uh like a point on curve for a large value n okay so it will be an integer okay so an integer will be converted to point okay so this g value okay so at the end g you can get the public curve for the public uh, key for the user a when you are performing a private key uh, for the user b into g you can get the public key for the user b okay so both user a and b calculating the public keys okay here user a and b calculating the selecting the private keys randomly they are selecting the private keys okay here they are calculating the public keys using the private key their private key okay next they have to calculate the shared secret key okay next they have to calculate the shared secret key when you user a calculating this is the user b calculating the shared secret key k equal to okay secret key of the user a into public key of user b okay when the user a calculating the secret key they will use the secret key of the user a into the public key of the user b Yes,
okay so so this is a uh, so the pub, uh, user a and b pri public private key user a and b public key now user uh, a and b sh shared a secret key so user a calculating this way user b calculating this way so they are using the user b private key into user a's public key using that the user b calculating the secret key okay so the both the key must, must be in the same way okay must be have the same value so that k equal to uh, private key uh, of the user a and private key of user b into g so you will get the same value okay so in this way this is an, normally as you as you see in the defilement method okay so you are calculating the q or p value okay q or p value that's a prime numbers okay large integer large integer value then you are calculating the g value okay you are choosing the integer g value okay with a large uh, it is a point on curve for a large value n okay then you are selecting the private key for user a and b then calculating the public key for user a and b then calculating the shared uh, secret key for the user a and b okay this is as you seen in the defilement method okay next we are applying the elliptic curve here to perform the encryption decryption we are applying the elliptic curve method here okay so after that okay as we know what is the global variable okay uh, q or p okay q r p okay and g okay q r p and g okay so next what you have to do means okay you have the plain text m okay this is a given plain text m okay so the plain text m means okay it represent the in the x y x and y format okay the plain text is represent the form of x and y format otherwise if they given as a integer value this will be converted in the form of x and y format okay if they given as an integer this integer value will be converted in the form of x and y okay so we are representing the form of x and y okay next i as we know you said n a you choose the private key public key so everything will know a random key okay so when you are performing the in can when you are converting the so you have to choose the random key k here okay so what you one more steps you have to do means you have to randomly select the random key here you have to choose the random key value here okay so after select, selecting the random key value okay so uh, then you have to perform the encryption okay that means you are calculating the cipher text okay so how you are calculating the cipher text means for example user a user a is calculating this this cipher text okay user a is calculating the cipher text okay so how you they calculate the cipher text means k into g okay k is a random key into g is a uh integer okay integer g okay so we know this value global public uh, global integer value okay k into g comma so it has a two parameter other. that means the cipher text will contain the two parameters first parameter is the k into g and second parameter is the plain text plus random uh, integer value k into that means public key of the user b okay the public key of the user b okay so normally we will we, when you are going to encrypt the value using the receiver's public key only we will do the encryption right the same way we are doing here okay so it, the cipher text will contain the two parameters first one k into g k is the random k, uh, integer value and g is the global in, uh, integer value comma pm is a plain text and k is the random integer value into pb pb is the public key of the user b so this is the cipher text okay so this is the cipher text to, when you are performing the encryption you will get this value okay when you perform the encryption you will get these two parameters for the cipher text you will get the two two parameters kg comma pm plus k into pb okay next this cipher text will be transmitted to the receiver side okay the receiver need to perform the decryption okay there is the receiver need to perform the decryption to perform the decryption so we have to do this in the inverse manner okay so we have to do the cipher text in the calculate in the inverse manner okay what is the inverse manner means okay so the kg okay when the, the kg is multiplied with the uh, the receiver's private key okay that this parameter kg is multiplied with the receiver's private key okay receiver's private key the answer of this is subtracted with the this parameter okay the answer of the multiplication of private key into kg is subtracted with the this value so when you are subtracting this value you get the original plain text okay you, so as you know what we are getting okay so do you know what is the nb value what is the nb value as you know what is the nb value so nb uh, okay so nb into g 
okay so when you are getting the nb value you so can uh, sir pb uh, okay kg nb so when you are applying the pb here okay so apply the pb value here okay so when you are applying the pb value you can get the nb into g okay so you know the pb pa equal to n into g pb equal to ng nb into g so when you are applying the pb value here uh, pm plus k into nb into g okay you get the nb into g here okay so after that when you are multiplying this this both will be cancelled this both will be cancelled okay you will get only the pm value okay so so this is a way of perform the decryption okay so decryption is okay So decryption is so you can perform in the inverse manner. Okay, so you have to multiply this parameter with the private key of the user B. Then the value, the result of this multiplication should be subtracted with the this value, this parameter, for the second parameter. So that in this you know, instead of PB, you are applying the NB into G. Okay, so when you are adding this, both will be uh, cancelled. So you will get the original plain text. So this is the way of getting the LP curve cryptography. Okay. So anyone have doubt in this? Listen, this is a, this one is same as a defi element key exchange. Okay, the first th these steps. Okay, so you have to choose the Q or P value. Then you have to choose the G value. This is the global public elements. This both are the Q or P or and G. So both are the global public elements. Then you have to uh, the user have to choose the private keys. User A and B they will select the private key. And they have to compute the public key using the, the private keys. Then they can calculate the shard key. Okay. Then they can calculate the shard key. So then to perform the encryption, you have to assume the random k value. You have to assume the random uh, k value. Okay. Then to calculate the ciphertext, you will get the two parameters. So k into g. Okay. The random k value into global public global integer variable g, comma pm plus k into pb pm means plain text plus random variable into uh, public key of the user b so is this the cipher text for the uh, user a so this, this they will get the cipher text the cipher text will be transmitted to the user b then to perform the decryption okay the user b uh, the, for the first parameter they will multiply the user b's private key with the first parameter then they subtract this result with the second parameter okay when you are doing this they will get the original plain text this is what the LP curve uh, cryptography using defi element key exchange. Okay, LP curve cryptography using defi element key exchange. Hope everyone clear, right? Listen in the basic. So what we saw means okay. So LP curve cryptography. So what are the advantage means? It will be faster. It will use the small key, uh, but provide a higher level of security, and it will be used for the low computational power. Okay, so it will be used for the low computational power. Okay. So we can define in the three ways. So LP curve over real numbers and LP curve over prime numbers and LP curve over finite fits. Okay. So when you are going to LP curve over prime numbers, this is a cubic equation. Okay. So, so this, uh, this is the cubic equations. Okay. When you are drawing the straight line in the curve, LP curve. Okay. So if the three points joined by the straight line, the sum of the three points will be zero. Okay. We can say that as a zero point. We can that one say as a zero point. And the sum of the three point will be zero. Okay. So the, the rule for addition is the p plus zero will always yield the result as, as p. That means p means point. The point the point of p plus zero will always yield the result as point of p. Okay. The point of p means it have the x comma y coordinates. Okay. When you are converting the p into negative p, okay, the x, x p comma minus y p, you will get it. Okay. So in the same when you are going to the uh, prime curve and the prime numbers, L P curve of prime numbers. Okay. This is the cubic equations. Okay, so this is the rules for addition. So when you are going to the finite field, okay, that means the set of the cubic equation can uh, will be uh, contain set of elements up to two power n. So up to two power n in prime, it can have up to zero to two p minus one. So the prime element uh, it has the uh, contain set of elements up to zero to p minus one here up to two power n. Okay, so this is a cubic equation for the uh, finite field, and this is the rules for addition. But here. When, when you are counting the negative p, you are getting xp comma xp plus yp. Okay, so it will be different in uh, from both the uh, prime and uh, prime and uh, what's the uh, real numbers. Okay, and when you are converting uh, uh, 
doing the input cryptography using the DeFi element key exchange. So this is the method. Okay. Do you have doubt in this? So anyone have doubt? You can post your doubt in chat box.